When I take off my shirt, people stare at my chest, even though it's not there. Women often think I'm lying when I commiserate about what it's like to have men stare at your chest. Men love endlessly gazing at mine. That's because it looks like God dug out a ball of my innards with an ice cream scoop while I was in utero. The cause is genetic. Although no one else in my family has this medical condition known as pectus excavatum, more commonly called funnel chest. I don't love these terms, so I typically use the descriptor concave to describe my own. This condition exists on a body, typically male-born, with the breastbone sunken into the chest, in some cases leaving a deep dent. And a major side effect of funnel chest, documented across numerous medical journals, low self-esteem. <laughs> People have been fascinated with my body for nearly as long as I've been repelled by it. Right now, edging 40, I've never been in better physical shape, and yet I feel incredibly uncomfortable nearly any time I see myself in the mirror, in a picture, or just looking down. Shame and embarrassment spring forth from the small canyon next to my heart. Try as I might, I cannot stop this reaction. All I've ever wanted for my body was flatness, the kind that could unlock bonus societal privileges. A flatness that allows you to lift up your shirt at the gym to casually check out the smooth, defined core that lies beneath. A warm-up ritual prior to snapping a thirsty pick. The proof of perfection. The most nagging thought lingering in my brain is that one day I, too, might obtain this same sculpted male figure that the world lusts after. Flat chest, flat abs, all flat everything. In middle school, as my body developed, so did interest towards it. Taking off my shirt in the locker room after P.E. elicited profanity-laced exclamations from all my preteen male compatriots. Are you a mutant or some shit? <laughs> Whoa, that's so gnarly. Yo, did you get punched as a fucking baby? <laughs> all the boys wanted to touch it. So I let them. All of them wondered if I ate cereal out of it. I hadn't. Not yet. <laughs> Though I was Cheerios curious. Sometimes, in the right lighting, it looked like I had tits. Once, a buzz cut eighth grader with bad acne put his whole fist into the dent of my chest, then thumbed my nipple as he removed his hand, drooling to himself about how he couldn't wait to touch the real thing. By the time high school rolled around, I started to treat my body with more care and consideration. I'd lost 30 pounds to get hot for my bar mitzvah, but <laughs> I still didn't feel comfortable removing my shirt. At this age, however, girls had also started to notice my chest, which only complicated my feelings because it was very important that everyone think I was a total smoke show at 16, especially girls. Two classmates, both crushes of mine, asked me to participate in an art project involving my chest as the subject. I thought this request was going to lead to me having one, if not two, girlfriends right there on the spot. The finished product was a case molding of my torso, painted in the spirit of René Magritte. However, instead of writing the French for, this is not a pipe, their version was, this is not a chest. The girls adored the inverted space next to my sternum, treating it with respect and dignity while I got lost in the mix. They only wanted part of me to be featured as a work of art, not all of me. I felt honored when I was asked to be their model, enchanté, but <laughs> conflicted about being a novelty after seeing the finished grade A project, which they gifted me and I threw in a dumpster. <sighs> Le sigh. As college approached, doctors started taking turns playing around with my pectus excavatum, making sure it was not impacting my lungs or my heart as I solidified into the nearly final draft of my adult body. First opinion said, nothing to worry about. My particular condition was merely cosmetic. Second opinion recommended surgery. 
one which required a metal bar to be placed inside my chest for several months, if not longer. This bar would act as a retainer to keep my newly risen central cavity upwards while it settled into its new flattened shape. I started to worry that if I did not have this surgery, I was doomed to be a man-child virgin forever. But ultimately, I declined the procedure, wanting no part of the extensive rehab during my first semester out of state, which would have included bed rest, physical therapy, and months of relearning how to breathe. Still, I endlessly questioned my choice to remain unbarred and concave. One autumn night, I found myself in my college dorm, roommate gone for the weekend and a co-ed naked in my bed. This was completely new territory for me that I did not want to fumble. The time had come to remove my shirt, only when I did, she gasped upon seeing my chest, instantly ending the night on an embarrassing note. After that incident, I vowed to warn anyone who wanted to strip down to the buff with me that I had a chest that was disfigured, a word I hated using but felt I deserved for being such an anatomical monstrosity. When the time came to actually lose my virginity, I had found the confidence to share my body, but was not sure who would accept it. Finally, my V card was swiped by an old friend from high school during winter break. The two of us had both been on the improv team, were each other's prom dates, and she had always predicted she'd be the one to pop my cherry. Oh, and she only had one hand. The Furiosa of my sexual history. She was confident, funny, and would not tolerate fools, especially ones who called her nub fucker. <laughs> In more ways than one, she taught me that what I had to work with was all I needed. She was also the first woman to call my funnel chest sexy. Throughout college, I became less and less self-conscious about my concave centerpiece. I used it as a beer holder. My friends used it as a guacamole bowl. And my girlfriends wore it as a uniboo bra. After college, as we all grew into our adult lives, a new set of struggles tackled my self-image. Muscles felt like a pipe dream, as did any sense of healthy living. Something was off. I was not getting life right compared to everyone else. Though older, I remained frozen in my childhood reflection. I hated my body for always reminding me of who I was and who I would forever be different, weird, and just not able to fall in line like you're supposed to. It wasn't until my late 30s, well into adulthood, that I finally started to ease up on the self-shaming, body and otherwise. I started to eat better, get regular exercise, and tried not to base my standards solely on what the algorithm fed me. Last summer, I was a groomsman in one of the most lavish weddings I've ever attended, so fancy, it was even featured in Vogue magazine. And yes, I am in the photo spread, which does in fact count as being in Vogue. As we were changing before the ceremony, the groom's youngest brother shrieked upon seeing my bare chest. You've got what I've got. Oh, here's a hot take. Rich people suck. For the entire week leading up to the wedding, I felt a different kind of otherness than what I'm usually accustomed to, not being part of the wealthy elite, all of whom acted like snot-nosed babies during the wedding week. But no one was more of a diaper blowout than this youngest brother of the groom, a real Roman Roy meets Buster Bluth type. Now, he and I were face to face as he unbuttoned his shirt to reveal that he did have what I had, except he didn't actually have it. Instead, what I saw were two scars on the outside of his sanded down pectorals. Between the scars was a dark, almost serpentine line across his smooth, pale chest from one raisin nipple to the other. He'd had the surgery same one I'd opted out of, and to my surprise, he regretted it. According to him, getting a normal chest hadn't made his life better in any way. On the contrary, it had stunted his life, forcing him to take time off of school and watch his peers move on without him. This was the man-child virgin I always feared becoming, the me of a darker timeline, 
Here was someone in his mid-twenties who, when his pocket square fell out of his lapel, cried out in a public space, Daddy, Daddy, I need help with my hanky! Back in the dressing room, I almost couldn't believe what I was hearing. This was a one percenter, someone who will never have to struggle for anything in his life. The poster child for cishet male Caucasian privilege, but what he wanted most in life was my body. There was no going back for him. No reversal surgery to indent his chest once more. Now, here he was, fawning over my chest with the knowledge that all the king's horses and all the king's men and all of Papa's money would never put him back together again. <laughs> now at this point in my life, I've mostly accepted my body for what it is, mostly. But the craziest thing is that while I keep snubbing my physical self, everyone else seems to sincerely admire it. Now that we're all adults, hardly anyone points or gawks at my chest. Instead, I'm greeted with compliments, thoughtful questions, and sharing of similar traits that just make us who we are. The world isn't flat in so many ways, and the truth is I really do love having a part of my body reflect my individualism out to the world. The remaining challenge is feeling like there's some end goal to obtain, a perfect male physique that nestles seamlessly into an idyllic life. But that's just a fantasy. My friends, my family, my community, and even strangers, they seem to lovingly accept me for me, funnel chest and all. So maybe, just maybe, one day I will too. Thank you. Jake Arkey, ladies and gentlemen, Jake Arkey.